sound that a war. He has the other war. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need to know that there's a lot of stuff that the enemy's come up with and devices. In yes, he has, brother. And he said, in the, and David was in a hole in the garrison of Philistine was in, in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink yes. of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. That was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it thereof, pour it out into the Lord. Those three mighty men, if you look at them, you can think and say, well, what caused them men to do that? Yeah, listen. Man. It was the love of their people. Yeah. yeah. It was the honor to be able to serve David yeah. to their king. Yeah. You say, well, how did they know that David wanted to drink out of that well, they was listening for any pain that the king might hit for. We've been Christians for a long time. The chief, I believe, right among our holiness faith, right among our holiness churches, we've got hundreds, not just a few, but we've got hundreds that knows about the power of God. Help him, God. Yeah. See, it says in the memory of Reverend Park Sailor, yeah. when I was just a boy, Park Sailor would come into my mom and dad's house. And dad and Park would go together. So we know about the old people. And yes. We've been in churches with all different ones. So we understand it. We've heard since the beginning. And along the way, we we got saved. And we've become Christians our own self. Uh -huh. And we've got deeper and deeper in the things of God. And we know that there's a Holy Ghost. And we get a hold of the power of God. And but we need to listen for the voice of God because He is our King and He is our Savior. And there's instructions that He's asking us to do. And, and we might call ourselves mighty men. They call them mighty men of God. But, but we're mighty men of God and women of God that's been chosen by Him to serve Him in this time to be able to show the world that, that there is a Christian people that can live and know the things of God and knows about the voice of God. And we were to turn around and know, some of you may know about Becky and, and when she was sick and stuff. And, and I remember one time when she got really sick and, yeah. and I was a young Christian and I thought, well, there'll be somebody come through that door and, and they'd pray for my daughter and she'd get up. But how I figured out that it might be some big man uh, uh, some well-known preacher uh, right. or some big young guy uh, uh, that I know my whole life uh, I might come through the doors. Uh, but after a while, uh, it didn't matter who it was. Uh, uh, just as long as somebody come through the door uh, uh, listening to the God uh, and listening for His voice uh, uh, to tell Him to come by uh, and pray for my daughter. Yes. Help Him, God. I was just wanting somebody to find him after a while. Yeah. And I remember that day very well. We were down in that hospital in Knoxville. And I really did. I thought something at some point there would be some big name preacher. Or somebody come through. That elevator door opened. Help him. And when I see him step out, there was something different about him. They wasn't there to talk to nothing. Right. They wasn't there to chat and ask how her I was doing. Right. But the first thing they said is, we've come to pray for your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. So we've come to pray for your daughter. Yeah. And that man and his wife, they wasn't laughing. And they wasn't, they wasn't doing anything. They wasn't kipping, but they had it. Sometimes they have their eyes closed. Yeah. And he just sit there with his eyes closed trying to stay focused on what God wanted him yeah, to do. Yeah. And I went to that nurse station. And I said, we need to get these people back to pray for Becky. 
And that woman said, we got a specialist coming, and they'll have to wait. I said, ma'am, this is a Baptist hospital. Surely you believe in prayer. And that was enough to cause that woman to start twisting. And she'd look one way and she'd look the next way. Directly, she said, just take them on back there and let them pray. And I'll hold the doctor back. Yeah. Yeah. When they walked in the room, that Holy Ghost fell right down in that room. Yeah. And the nurses would be behind the curtain looking around to see what was going to happen next. And I really believe it was Harold not believing good enough. I believe Becky could have got up. But I was more worried about what the nurses were thinking than what God was wanting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. I wasn't ready for what the voice was really looking for that day. Even though I was saying, Lord, whatever it takes or whatever you want, that's what we want. But we will need your help. We need you to send somebody. And when he sent somebody, I wasn't ready. After a little bit, they prayed for Becky. And they walked right back out. And they went right back into that elevator. And they drove to Kentucky. I went in and I sat down in that, that waiting room. And directly that nurse, that doctor, wherever she was, come around real quick around the corner. Just in a few minutes. Becky had been in a coma for several days. And that doctor done told me that morning said, we've done all we're going to do. We're going to see what happens, see what happens next. And that's just when the Lord ordered the order. Mm -hmm. She said, have you seen Becky? The first thing that went across me was, oh no, Becky's got worse. And whenever I said that to myself, that nurse just went ahead and answered it for me. Said she's up on the side of the bed eating. Yeah, thank God. Said that's the way the Lord is. He's looking for soldiers. And yeah. He's looking for people that's listening to his voice all the time. Waiting on any little thing. And, and we need to get to the place of, of the where it is when he calls us up to the front line. That, that we're ready and able to go. And willing and because we've been trained in the ways of God. In the spirit of God. In the order of God. And we know what it takes. And we know how to get hold of him. And we need to be ready for the order to be called. been different times. No doubts I've become a coward. And I'll sit back and I'll wait for somebody else to preach. I'll sit and I'll wait for somebody else to testify. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes if I get really big and my own get all scared up or whatever, I'll even stay home. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Well, how can I ever hear the key Say, go get your drink out of the way. Oh, if I was at the back of the line. Them back men in the battle was sitting real close to David. Why? Because they felt that they had the power. And they had the knowledge. And they had the understanding of what it would take to do to break that enemy's line. And go to that well. Yeah. And draw that water out. And they would be successful in bringing it back to the king. If they didn't believe that, they'd have never went that day. And we need to be to the place of, that we have confidence in what God tells us to do. And if He says, go pray for somebody, I go pray for them. Right. It's for a reason. If He tells you to get up and shout, I just get up and shout. There's a reason. Amen. Everything is for the edification. Everything is for the Lord. Yes. And it has nothing to do with you or I. Yes. We just need to be willing servants. Yes. Living to the place that we can hear yes. that small, still voice. Yes. Yes. I was one time, I, some of you may have heard it. I was down about as low as I know how to be. Yeah. 
We've all been there. If you've been a Christian, then he, he will take you to that place. And he will torment your mind as he'll take you to the word. So probably no doubt you might be doing better than you thought. They invited me to the little David Sizemore's church dinner one day. Yeah. And when I got to that church, I only went because they asked me. Felt like I couldn't hardly go nowhere. And when I got to the church, it was a small church, probably not even as big as that group of church. Yeah. Yeah. Small. Yeah. And when I got to that church, I parked my car and I headed down the hill. But I didn't take it on with me. What did you touch by? I left that Bible laying in that car. And when I got down the hill, that brother that I told you that had come down to pray for that daughter of mine, mm -hmm. he met me halfway up the hill. And he said, Harold, do your best today. And I remember dropping my head that day, and I spoke to my own heart, to my own self. He said, if you only knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even look him in the face. Yeah. He said, Harold. And I raised up to look at him. He said, do your very best today. And I said, okay. You know, so you mm -hmm. did, I walked down that to that little old church. When I got to the door, the Lord spoke to me. And I heard him speak. He said, said what? Well, where is your Bible? Yeah. I said, in the car. He said, you may need your Bible today. He didn't say you will, because that would be left up to me. But he said, you may leave these your Bible today. And there was enough love for the Lord that I turned around and I walked back up that hill. Yeah, walked back. And I picked that Bible up out of that car. Yes, yes. And I brought it down there. And when I went through that door, I set my Bible in the last chair, in the last row against the end. Because yeah. I've done what the Lord had asked me to do. Uh -huh. In my mind, I brought my Bible to the church. Yeah, yeah. Right from the church yeah. And I looked up toward the front and I said, I won't have to do nothing today. Because up there stood a several good brothers. And I can name a bunch of them. At that time, Daddy was still alive. Daddy was sitting about right in this area. And as I come up through there and I looked, and there was no word to say. And it put me up on the rostrum about where you were at. You don't think the Lord knows what to do? He knows what to do. He knows what to do. And as I walked by Daddy, he said, hello, Brother Collins. And I said, hello, Brother Collins. And he kind of smiled at me. I may never forget that. When I sat down, I looked down between my legs and there was the biggest circle box I'd ever seen. I didn't know what was in it, but I was the biggest box I'd ever seen. And I pulled it out and I looked at it and it was the biggest rattlesnake I'd ever seen. And I pushed it back. Yeah. Daddy said, son, it's a big one, ain't it? And I said, yes, it is. We opened up the service. And I knelt down to pray. And this was the prayer. I said, Lord, will you be my David today? And will you kill this Goliath? Yeah. And when I said that, the Lord spoke to my heart and he spoke with authority. He said, I am the son of David yeah. and greater am I yeah. than he. Yeah. He's on the genealogy of Christ and where the children of Israel was afraid. And I began to cry because that load was gone, just like that it was gone. Yeah. And that but one of the brothers said, Harold, I kept crying. He said, if you got it, then you bring it on. And when I got up, I started, I said, I need to read a little bit. And the Lord knew what he was doing. And I said, I started to read it. 
And I turned around and I said, hand me that box. And I handed me that box and I held it up in the air and pounded it toward the crowd. And I said, this right here to me is a lie. And when he does that, the Holy Ghost fell on me up and the tongue started rolling up. And I began to walk around the Bible stand up. And the Lord, it grew greater. Up. And my God was told me up. And so that day, up, I to deliver a message up. And he wanted to show the people up. And he had power. But I'm the one who got victory that day, right? Yeah. And all the brothers got in. And ever since I've been a little boy, Daddy would always say, son, watch who you take them from. And be careful who you do. Yeah. That day I watched Dad cry. And he stepped out and he said, Hot son, let me help you. And between then, that's the only time I ever known that me and him handled a serpent together. Yeah. But you remember that guy on the hill? He was the one that knew the plan. Yes. He said, Harold, I knew you had it. Yeah. And I said, Kim, how did you know I had it? The Lord only gave it to me this morning. He said, I was praying in my altar last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I pulled six days for this one service. He said, Lord, I'll preach anything you want me to preach. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to him and said, no, Harold Collins is going to. See, that man was ready and willing, yeah. but he was also listening for the instructions of God. The man was ready to go to battle, fully clothed and ready with the power and anointing. Yeah. And he was trained in the things of God. But it was a young boy. I was very young, 20, 18 years ago, just beginning to get into preaching. And that day the Lord taught me a lesson. I was an older man. I already knew what the plan was for that day. And that's what we need to do is find out where we're what exactly is what God is wanting. But we have to be ready yes. for every good work. I told them a few weeks ago, I've been trying to get our young people to step out. Yeah. I've been a Christian for 20, going on 21 years. Didn't start praying until I was 40. And I'd asked them young people to step out. And it felt like I said, well, what are you doing? And I picked me up a songbook, Venus. <laughs> And I said, I ain't never sung in church in my life. Right. But I'm going to sing tonight. And you'll just have to help. Yeah. You know what? The Lord blessed me as good that night as I've been blessed in a long time. Why? Not because Harold Collins could sing. It was because that I got to the place of, that I was willing to do anything that might please the Lord. I might find favor with him. I would not call he might hear me. Uh, and we got to get to the place uh, that we have confidence in him. Uh, yeah. And we have confidence in what he's saying. Uh, and his ability uh, to lead us and guide us uh, through this time. Right. Amen. 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 He's got more devices. Amen. When we go down to the army today, they have different tools than they had. They have different weapons yeah. than they had <coughs> back when they was doing the draft right after one later by the time I got to high school, the draft hit. Yeah. Totally different warfare. Yeah, it is. You know, a lot of warfare. Yeah. The enemy has got devices that you and I haven't even thought of. But he thought of these devices maybe a thousand years ago. He knows as much about me. He knows more about me. He knows more about you than we ever know about ourselves. But we have got to get to the place of where our leader, our king, guides us and keeps us and gives us instructions to follow. Work for me. That was willing. Anything I could 
they say, just try this. Go do that. And they say, I'll take care of it. They may not be the best, but they try. I've had some that I just watched them walk across the parking lot. And I could not tell you if they were going to do anything or not. The Lord sees our walk. He knows our step. He knows our heart. He knows everything about us. He knows what you're capable of. He's not going to see you in the battle unless you're worthy and you have the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom, and also the victory to overcome. He will not put you in a crosshair and where you get hurt, it will be left up to me and you. But I need to be willing to train harder. Yeah. Yeah. Children of Israel had thousands, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand in one battle, maybe a hundred thousand died in one battle. But they had plenty of soldiers. But why did he call out the men of out? Why are they in the mouth? Why? Because they stepped out a little bit more up for the king. Or they wanted to prove to their king that they loved him with everything they had. Even if it cost them their life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I changed my life to serve the Lord. I took a new lifestyle to serve the Lord. I gave up all that old junk back there to serve the Lord. So he is my king. He is my savior. He is my friend. So if he's all that to me, then why wouldn't I be willing and why wouldn't I be ready to be able to do anything that the Lord asks me to? Oh, I don't like it easy. Sometimes it's easy for me to sit back. Yeah. Sometimes we lack the confidence in our own self. Amen. Sometimes we say, it's real easy for me to say that Demas is up here and Harold is down here. But I ought to be ready like that one. He said, just let me run. He didn't have nothing, but he asked him. He said, why don't you just let me run? And he finally told him to run. Yes, yeah. We need to be willing in anything. Yeah. So that boy that in that old Bible is told that let me run, that was the high priestess. Uh, yes, David, no, he wouldn't lie. Her grandson, he was kidding the high priest. He wasn't a lot of it. He just wanted to be around baby Vicky. We need to get to the place. He said, well, I'm too old. We're not too old. We're not too old. I've seen this sister get in a lot of times. Don't even know her, but I've seen her face. Yeah. She's always right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. She may be that praying warrior. Yeah. 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 She might be the one. You know, in the front lines, somebody had to teach those soldiers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Jesus. Those guys was out there fighting heavy. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When they got cut. Somebody had to stitch them up the best they could, or whatever they done, wrap them up. Somebody had to be able to make the decision that this man's ready to go back to the front line. So it takes all kinds in the church. Young, old, willing, able. Blessing God. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, L
Instructions of God. You look around, and dad, me and my dad was probably about like two brothers. I only know one time that I ever even might have got a little head with him, and he broke down and cried. And I got right down to his knees and I cried. Yeah. So there was no conflict there. Mm -hmm. But just in a few days after he was gone. There was questions I had never asked him. I'm talking about spiritual, vital questions. Yes. Dad, how do you believe this? How do you stand on this? What do you think about this? How do I get a hold of that? How do I find out this? All these questions come through. You know where I got my answer? Because I don't know. Oh my Lord. I remember when I first started preaching. <coughs> I might have even been a prophet. I preached a message and somebody got up and said, Well, how are they good today? Dad got on the floor and said, You can do that. He was that quick to say, He didn't want me to get exalted. Right. But at the same time, he wanted me to move on up. Yeah. Yeah. He said he could do better. I was preaching another message and I misquoted it. He caught me right in the right on the pulpit. He said he don't think it that way, sir. It's just the way he was. No hard feelings. But the next time, I'd look a little harder. I'd call him and I'd say, Dad, the Lord's give me this scripture. Where's it at? He'd say, Well, you ought to know that it's in this book and it's in this chapter. And it's around this verse. And which Bible have you got? And I tell him what Bible. He said, it's probably on the left hand page. <laughs> he was instructing me that it was good to ask for that, but I need to find and seek it out and find and get closer to God. Because he wasn't always going to be there. Yeah. And now we're not always going to be here. And the church must go on until the end of time. That's so we have to have somebody a, a willing to wait. I'm on the instructions of God and to find out where they're at and to follow them to a team. Yeah. If we don't, your grandchildren or my grandchildren may get led astray. Yeah. The world's going astray and they sure take your children with them if they can. If nothing else, the enemy would point it out and say, look at that homeless man's grandson or the granddaughter over there. Oh, why do they thank him now? Just make a dump for him. So we have to hold a high standard. Mm -hmm. And we have to stay close to God. Mm -hmm. In 90 minutes an hour, you reckon they thought they wouldn't make it back? They took something to get the water in. They brought the water back. Yeah, they did. In Hebrew, boys, went in the far. Yeah. They didn't know if God was going to be on their side or not. No. But they still want to go in the far. Yeah. Where is the you're not going to go back. Yeah. It's still going to stay with God. Uh, yes, God. Now they know that it's praying. Daniel prayed one place, and he might have fasted up close to where it was, 17, 28, and all they told him, said, Lord, said, I heard you on the first day. Mm -hmm. He did. But it was drawn him closer to God. Mm -hmm. So every time the Harold gets up, I've had messages I get up, and when I got in the, the car, I thought you just made the big shipwreck of that thing, and I don't even know if the Lord's moved on. That's what it is. Yeah. But if I did that and listened to that, I'd never preach another message. He'd defeat me before I got out of the house. If he gives you a song and you miss a chord, so what? It's the part of that that your heart's in it and you're willing to sing for God. 
If you want to play the guitar and you string it wrong, don't worry about it. It's all about trying to please God. I misquoted it. That don't mean I don't love God. It don't mean that I don't want to serve God. Right? And I don't want to try more than that. God help me. He says it's a warfare. And every day there's somebody dying and lost. And every day there's somebody getting closer to giving up. Yes. But to the bright side, if we say this, every day somebody can be saved. Amen. Every day somebody can find their help through the Lord. God help. But we have to be that one that goes when the Lord desires it. We need to go after it. Yeah. Help him, God. Bring that cup back. Yes. I told my wife, I said, Darlene, I said, I'm about over this place. I said, I'm about ready to go. I said, I hurt, I ache, and I this, and I that. And I wouldn't mind just to go on. She rebuked me really quick. She said, that would be very selfish of you, wouldn't it? And I said, well, I said, well, what if there was one person that you could have helped somewhere along the way down the road? Why would you want to go now and cause that person? And she just, I'm telling you, she could be rebuked me quick. Yeah. I said, yes, well, darling, you're right. Yeah. So it's real easy to get to the place to say, oh, I can't do nothing. That enemy hits me too hard. That enemy fights me too hard. The enemy cuts me too much. It's not got nothing to do with it. Don't you reckon them boys know that they're going to be cut before they got back? Sure they did. Don't you know that the Lord can heal instantly? Yes. Oh, naturally, spiritually. It's like he did on that day for me. I thought I was a bleed now. But he healed me instantly. Right. Amen. Amen. I was ready to go fight. We are chosen people. Come on. You are chosen people. You're children of God. You're talking about God who created the heavens and the earth. And he's took millions and billions of people and he decided to come down in this little church and this little handful of people uh, that they know him as their personal king, as their personal savior. And he listens to you uh, when you talk. Uh, you need to get the word. You listen to him when he talks. Because yeah. you might have the very thing that breaks it free. Yeah. yeah. I asked to my own self, I said, well, Lord, I know you come by and touched Becky that day. I know you did. Why did she live maybe 16 or 17 years more and still die? Then I started saying, was she ready the first time to die? That's only between her and the Lord. Right? Well, I said, she left a son. And we call him Isaac. And he loves to sing in the house of God. I mean, you take him anywhere you want to. If you give him a mic, that boy's going to let her go. He stood right beside of her. Right beside of her test, she said, I want to sing Molly one more song. So we got somebody out of this whole deal. I can 
got to keep her for 15 more years. It looks like God failed. No, I got another grandson. I got to keep her 15 years. Uh, she might not be ready. I'm glad that he gave me what he gave me. So the battles may get tough. The battles may get hard. Help me, Lord. The battles may get bloody. There might even be casualties along the way. Come on, Herbie, you can help us. But for us to win the battle for our own personal self, we have to follow the instructions of God. We are chosen. I keep saying that. I know it. They were chosen. They were David's mighty men. They had a job to do. Protect the king. Do whatever the king asked. You're chosen to do the things that God asks. He works through us to be able to get the edification done. He works through us to be able to get the anointing down to where maybe somebody might pray. You are his army. Right. Help him, God. God, you help him. And the pay is wonderful. You get the bonus every once in a while, fill the anointing. Yeah. And you can get a lifetime of eternity of retirement with no pain, no sorrow, nothing. So you need to be with it. We won't come over to you for a while. I know the soldiers speak. I know they are. We got God fearing people, God loving people. But the enemy's trying to destroy everything that you do. And the only way is we got to draw closer to God. And when we get real close, that's when you'll know what to do. Yes, I heard me and Moses tell that he said, Lord, it's serpent handling. Is real. Give me one. Give me one. That's what it says. <coughs> it was long enough to fall or the winter, wasn't it? Yeah, February. Wasn't even supposed to be one. Don't you think God heard that? Yeah, yeah. he did. He heard that. He showed him his right. My wife. We was going down the road, you know, you get your wife. You can talk freely with your wife or your husband. She said, Harold, if you ever see me take up one of them serpents, she said, you can know God will come. Yeah. I said, yeah, darling. And I was thinking, boy, that'd be good. That's what, exactly what you need to do. Make sure it's God. You know, because you just were. We went to church that same night. She sat on the left-hand side. And I heard her feet hit the ground. I said, uh oh. Here she come. You know where she went? She went straight to the box. What was that for? Two things. One was for her, the other was for me. Yeah. I was the only person that knew <coughs> what she said. Yeah, exactly. What did that prove? That God heard that little girl that night in that car. And also he proved to her that she heard, he heard her, and he convinced her exactly what the instructions were. Yes, yes, right. Yes. On that. I think that's the way the Lord works. On that. She had to be listening. And then it had to take her away. She's learned to a bee. And the bee sees her. I've seen her where you can't even recognize her. You probably wouldn't even know who she is. I didn't know who she was. 
So no doubt there was that great fear in her. Yeah. If I ever get a hold of a snake and it bites me, I'm dead. Yeah. But that king, yeah. she was willing to take that instruction. Uh -huh. Live or die. Or he just told me what to do, and I'm going to do it. Live or die. We know there's anointing of God. Yes. Yeah. It comes with the instructions. We know that. Yeah. Yeah. But we have. I said, to Lord, sometimes I said, Lord, I love you. Yeah. But do I love you enough? Lord, I trust you. But do I trust you enough? But it's real easy sometimes for me to say, no, that ain't right. I better do it my way. And when I do that, it becomes a shipwreck. I wanted to come and see you. Really? Give strength, oh, yeah. Give strength, Jesus. I've been asking Jesus for a while. But they haven't served. I even text me. Yeah. But you know what? It was not, I was nervous to get up here. The enemy was fighting me hard right over there. He was. He started fighting me coming up the road. You're going to go over there and God ain't moving on. And you're going to make a mess. You're going to come all more up and they ain't going to fight every mistake. But sometimes we have to step out. Yes. Peter stepped out. He never had seen anybody walk on water till the Lord come. Right. Never had been done. And for him to ask the Lord, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. What else could the Lord say? It was him he had to say, come. Then it was left up to Peter whether he wanted to walk on the water or not. I appreciate you this time. I want to appreciate you this time. Wonderful, man. Don't count yourself too good. The Lord will send reinforcements. Yeah. Don't count yourself too good. God used David in just a moment. Samuel was even smaller. Was a child. He didn't even know the voice of the Lord. And Eli had to tell him what to say. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes it may not be how old you are or how young you are, but that will and heart. Yeah. We drove all the way to Florida. Well, can you listen to me? The Lord said, kind of said, put it on her heart, said, go to Florida. I think that's where I am. Go to Florida. Yeah, listen. Yeah. And I headed down and I said, Ron, will you go to Florida with me? And I said, no, Ron, you really go. He said, I would go with you. Yeah, yeah. So I put it in the right motion. Twelve hour drive down. And I said, Ron, I have three messages. Two to the church and one to the lost. That's what I told him. First night, to the church. Second night, to the church. There was a boy there that was a sinner. Yeah. And I went over to him and I said, you coming tomorrow night? He said, no. I can't come. I won't, I won't be here. And don't you think that you need to come in the night The next morning, I got my Bible out and I said, well, maybe I missed this night. And he kept going back to that same old message. Mm -hmm. I folded that Bible up. And up in the day, I said, Ronnie, we're going to preach the lost tonight. If you have to raise the windows, and open the door. Because I was stepping out now. Yeah. When I walked in that church, Come on, Mark. that boy was standing there. Yeah, he was. He drove all the way to <coughs> two hours. 
took that, got another car, and drove two hours back to be there. He preached to that boy that night, mm -hmm. and he come to the altar. Yeah. I haven't seen his name as me. <coughs> what did he go, three weeks, four weeks? And he found out he's got stage four cancer. Yes, he has. The Lord wanted that boy to have the opportunity. Yes, he he made the one. For that boy to hear Dad's left up to that boy what he does mm -hmm. with him. But how easy would it have been for me to say, I ain't never been to Florida. I don't even go to vacation to Florida. Why yeah. would I want to drive 12 hours for a two-hour service? Yeah. Because I wanted to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with her. There were going to be five people or seven there. Listen. You wanted to please the Lord? I wanted to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we got to get to that place it might not be good. We got in the car and drove 12 hours back. And Ronnie said, this is probably one of the best trips. He said, it's went so good. Ronnie got to shout in Florida. Got to pray for people in Florida. God knows what he's doing with our people. We need to quit asking a question to him and get to the place when he just requests it that we just say we're ready. Amen. Yeah. Help him God. Don't you know he loves don't he love his people that he does that follows just a little bitty thing. Yeah. Bless you ten times as much. Right, brother. Maybe a hundred times. Kim Simpson was that man that prayed for. Yeah. How hard was it? Kim Simpson can't even hardly walk unless he holds on to the church. Coming into the church house. How hard was it for him to drive all the way to Knoxville? And hurry for a little girl. Yeah. That they said I was going to live another way. Listen. He wanted to please. And I'm so glad he won't. Me and Becky got to spend another 15 years together. And it was worth it. I appreciate your time. Praise the Lord.